So. Cool. Here we go. Let's start. Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. So. Cool. Hey, Tad. Hi, Tana. <laughs> Nice to see Tana, you. Tana, Tana, it's the uh, the oh H is gosh. silent. That's okay. I've been it's a hard one. This whole time. It's Tana. a hard one. It's a hard one. Okay. Hi, Tana. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Thank uh, you so much. I'm glad you could uh, sit down and talk about your latest album, uh, Ona. Am I pronouncing that right? Yep, Ona. Okay. Fabulous. Um, so I had a chance to listen to the album, and I was really impressed, really excited by it. Uh, and I obviously have some questions about how you made it, but mm -hmm. first I just wanted to ask why you made it. Cause it seems like you've got a lot of powerful messages in there. I did. Well, first of all, thank you for listening. It really means a lot, especially since TC Halicon was a big part of uh, putting this record together, uh, in terms of, you know, the effects and things that I was using all throughout the album. So I'm so glad that you had a chance to check it out. Um, you know, the, the album, came together in a very organic way. Um, back in 2017, um, I went to the Women's March in Washington, D.C. and, you know, stood in the nation's capital with hundreds of thousands of people marching for women's rights and human rights. And it was something that really changed my life. It was an experience that I was a part of that just ignited this fire inside of me. Uh, and when I came back from that little trip to DC, I immediately wrote the song, The Resistance, which is the single that I released ahead of the album, featuring a uh, spoken word artist and poet, Stacey Ann Chin. Oh. And, um, and basically from that point onward, all throughout 2017, I started to write a bunch of music, not realizing until I was about three or four songs in that they all had this common theme. And the common theme was women, mm -hmm. women's empowerment. And it was, it was more focused on the successes and the triumphs of women rather than pointing of the finger and being angry and, you know, look at what you did oppressing me all of these years. It was more about a celebration of women and how you know women are like water. You know we always find our way through the through the cracks. I think uh, celebration is a great way to describe it, especially going with the very first song, Ona. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is it all right if I put that on in the background here? Just so we yeah, can absolutely. Some so, really powerful bits in there. Thank you. So, so Ona means um, she in Croatian, and I'm half Croatian. Okay. And the idea behind this song was to also pay tribute to the women in my life who experienced things across different generations, different cultures. You know, I come from an immigrant family that came to the United States after, you know, escaping communism. And, uh, and so the idea of having this tune with Croatian lyrics sung by a Balkan choir and English lyrics sung by a a bunch of women singing in English from the States. Um, it, it was just basically bringing my two worlds together and showing Ona is basically that all women is one woman. And mm. we, no matter where you're from, what age you are, um, what ethnicity you are, what religion you are, there's something about being a woman that grounds us all together and connects us. Oh, wow. Powerful. I, and it's nice to hear kind of that shared cultural background on, on, on it as well, because I didn't realize that um, there was that kind of Croatian element to it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the, all the whole kind of choir going in there, it just sounds so powerful. And I don't know. Just, like, Thank you. Sounds great. Um, and uh, you've also got, can you tell me a little bit about Pachamama? Um, yeah, so, so Pachamama came about after I took a, um, a trip to Peru um, to visit uh, my best friend who was getting married, and she happens to be with her husband there, eco-conservationists. So I was thrown into basically almost two weeks of this incredible nature experience and being so close to Mother Nature and seeing how in Peru, this idea of connection between um, tourism and nature and being connected with the earth is, is just such a big part of the culture. 
And it really, it really moved me. And being in these beautiful surroundings, seeing how rejuvenating nature can be, actually, mm. it was, um, it was really, really a moving experience. And Pachamama is the Quechua word for Mother Nature, um, the ancient Incan Quechua word. And so this idea of Pachamama was like a theme throughout our entire trip. And it just made me think when I came back to New York and was surrounded by concrete and, you know, this is our normal life. It was, uh, it was even more prevalent to me how far we have all come as human beings from being connected to nature and how we are so involved with ourselves as a human race that we don't understand that what we do to the earth, we actually do to ourselves. And mother nature will survive far beyond the years that we will be able to survive. And we just can't seem to understand that, that she will rejuvenate, she will uh, be reborn and, you know, will fix herself. But what we are doing to her is directly impacting our lives as human beings. Absolutely. I mean, listening to it, you know, it comes from a personal experience for you, but for me listening to it, I, you know, the parts about the fires and, and burning and all that it just makes me think of like the fires in Brazil and, and all yeah. sorts of, you know, just global environmental catastrophes. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just, Mother Nature has been giving us signs and signals for years. I mean, even this is something that hasn't even been on really the global news, but Croatia, where I'm from, last Sunday experienced an almost six on the Richter scale uh, devastating earthquake. Oh and it leveled, it leveled the center of the city where my entire family lives. Oh, wow. So in the midst of the virus and all these things that are happening, you know, the earth is shifting. Things are things are moving and we have to respond to it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty chaotic time right now. I mean, you're in New York City. Um, yes. So what, can you just for a moment detour from the album and just what's it like in New York City with the, the quarantine? It's very scary. I mean, it's, my husband and I live in Queens, which mm -hmm. is actually the epicenter of the virus in New York City right now. So Elmhurst wow. Hospital, which is about a 10, 15 minute walk from our house is just inundated with people waiting outside in lines all day, all night, all morning, trying to get in because they're sick. It's a, it's a very, um, you know, it's a working class neighborhood, which is also showing the, you know, economic differences between um, groups of people that are also affected by this virus. Um, it's, it's very, it's very scary. Yeah. And um, we've obviously had a lack of guidance from our fe federal government in terms of how to handle all of this. And we were very late as a country in getting on board with how to prevent the spread of the virus. And mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, we're not at the point of uh, where Italy got to yet, but it's, it's getting there and it's very scary. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're on the other side of the coast, but we're very close to Washington, and, and yeah. they're having a similar outbreak there. But I, I think New York right now is probably the worst in the nation. So that's, that's a frightening place to be, and I hope you guys can stay safe and healthy. Yeah, I hope so, too. I mean, we're, we're doing our best. I think this is also one of those rare instances in history where my personal decisions directly impact your health. And so it's a different thing to think about that, you know, what I choose to do in my daily life is not so much about my own health and my own safety, but I have to be worried about the safety of my neighbors, the safety of the people that are around me that I don't even know. I can impact their health without even being aware of it. So that's something Absolutely. that I don't think has really sunk in yet for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a neighbor who's a nurse and another neighbor with a one month or three month old baby, you know, it's yeah. kind of, you just want to make sure that you're not infecting other people or yeah. anything like that. But Well, I'm glad you guys are able to stay safe, even though you're likely quarantined up uh, in your apartment. Or, yes, we're you know? quarantined. But, um, but, you know, I've spent actually the majority of my quarantine 
uh, very, very busy um, with another TC Helicon artist, <laughs> Sarin Tip, who's an incredible um, singer, songwriter, loop expert. And, uh, and we've basically teamed up with another friend of ours, a saxophonist, Owen Broder, here in New York. And we created an online music festival and fundraiser uh, for um, to raise money to give grants to New York City musicians who have lost all of their work in the wake of the virus. So from it's great yeah. to hear. I mean, so many musicians right now, oh, like it's, all, I mean, all tours and everything has been canceled. All tours, yeah. I mean, all of my work until middle of August has been canceled. Wow, yeah. crazy. Um, so you know, we have to find a way to continue making music. I mean, this is going to be a very interesting shed experience, so to speak. I think a lot of artists are going to be forced to just work on their craft, develop their craft, write new music, create new forms of expression. And I think around this time next year, we're going to have a lot like an outburst of art, which will be mm. uh, pretty powerful. Well, that's something exciting to look forward to. I hadn't thought of it that way, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in times of crisis, it's always um, art and culture that makes uh, a generation remembered by something. So when you think of any artistic historical event, you know, it's usually connected to some sort of um, societal, political environmental change that artists are trying to wrap their heads around and, and express in some way. So I think this is going to be a really big opportunity for a lot of people to just dig deep and, and find things that they didn't know existed before. Absolutely. And I mean, you're kind of at the epicenter of it. So you're going to be just in the, yeah. where, where all the art and culture is coming from, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which puts true. you in a great spot. I mean, your albums being, very well received and you know working it's just you were talking a little bit about the the um the live in the living room is that what it's called yes it's a uh, live from our living rooms live from our, okay. yeah and that one uh you said you've had a couple write-ups about that as well and yeah it's it's unbelievable i mean we put this together in less than two weeks and got some of the biggest names in our, you know, jazz world to be on board, which was also very heartwarming to see how musicians who are considered the top tier in our field, how quickly they jumped on the opportunity to help the community, which was, it's, it's been really wonderful to see how willing uh, everybody has been to help. Um, but because of our stellar lineup, we immediately got a write-up in Rolling Stone. We got a story all of our own. We've been written up in Broadway World and Jazz Times and Jazz Is, all about jazz. Um, we have a Wall Street Journal uh, article coming out this week. So um, we you know, also have something coming out in the Financial Times probably. So we're really uh, exploding somehow, which is wonderful um, because the, the purpose of this festival, which is happening from April 1st to 7th, is that it's gonna bring attention to our fundraiser. And the fundraiser is going to help us give these relief grants to artists who apply for aid. Absolutely, and so many people could use it right now. Yes. Yeah, I mean, True. a lot of people don't think of musicians as kind of their own entrepreneurs and, and freelancers, but in a lot of ways, they, they really are. I mean, you're yeah. always looking for you know, next. Yeah, and we're, and we're really, really happy to be working with a wonderful nonprofit as well called Music Talks. Uh, which is a great organization here in New York City. And uh, they have agreed to be our fiscal sponsors so that we can receive tax deductible donations, uh, which is attracting institutional support and, uh, and larger grants from individuals. So it's, it's been a really, really amazing group effort, let's say. Fantastic. Um, and do you see this as something that you want to continue on in the future? Or does that depend on kind of where the virus takes? I mean, we'll, we'll see, you know, what we, we've set ourselves up to potentially be an ongoing thing. We've actually gotten so many inquiries from fellow musicians in New York who now want to perform for the festival because we have, we basically scheduled a one week, 
uh, a one week festival with four events a day, four live streamed events a day, an 11.30 uh, a.m. children's show because children are home from school and we want them to be right. educated and have music in their lives. Uh, then we have a 3 p.m. and this is all New York, New York East Coast time, um, 3 p.m. Uh, masterclass for interdisciplinary show and then two evening performances. So it's a very ambitious project, um, but we only scheduled one week and now it mm -hmm. looks like we may actually open it up for a second week of the festival at some oh, point. Oh, wow. wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank and you. You, uh, you also were on the cover of Downbeat. Uh, I was, I was. It's unbelievable. So many things have happened that it just, you know, it's, it's a huge, um, complex, bag of emotions and, and events. But um, yes, I, I came out on the cover of Downbeat, um, which will which has just gone to print, uh, you know, at the end of March, but it's for the May 2020 issue. Uh -huh. And um, it's I was on the cover with my husband, drummer and composer Antonio Sanchez. And um, it's basically talking about our musical collaborations as a couple, but also our individual projects and our records and, um, you know, the things that we're doing in parallel with each other, but as strong independent artists. And it was, it was a, mm -hmm. a huge, a huge deal to be on the cover of that magazine. That's fantastic to hear. Well, congratulations. We're really excited for all these uh, fantastic things happening uh, this month. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And, um, you know, of course, every chance I get, I'm mentioning TC Helicon and all the things that this company has, you know, given me in the way of figuring out Oh. Uh, what I was saying before before it broke up is that in uh, you know I've been doing so many interviews uh, recently um, related to the record and of course now related to this festival and uh, it's been it's been an amazing opportunity um, to kind of explain everybody's been very interested in my setup as an artist what I do live and how I'm actually you know there my record is very produced. And the question is always, you know, how do you do this live? And then they see these videos of me looping and doing effects and things like that. And so it's been, uh, it's been amazing to also share the information about TC Helicon. And I've been, you know, starting to give lessons online to people all around the world who want to use the voice live touch too. And uh, it's, it's really, I've been doing master classes and people are starting to know, you know, associate me with the live touch too and all of the looping and effects that I incorporate in my music. So it's been, uh, it's been well, to be able I, to do that as well. I should hope so. Cause you, you use it amazingly well, um, which is a great oh, okay. segue, uh, to talk about teardrop. You've got a, a cover on your, your latest album that, uh, it's got a lot of acapella elements to it. Is that right? And it seems like it uses the voice live touch. Too it quite does. A bit. Yes. Um, can you talk a little Absolutely. bit just about how you use the voice light touch to on this, this specific song? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, one thing that I really love about the touch to is in the most basic sense, just being able to control my own reverb. Mm. I feel like I am, whether I'm recording or performing live, I have the control over, you know, I'm a self-sustaining entity because I come with a package. I know exactly how I want my voice to sound and the voice touch too. the live touch too helps me achieve that. So, um, you know, I have this complex programming of different kinds of reverbs and delays and, and, uh, you know, granular delays and all of these different things based on which part of the song I'm in. So in the beginning, it starts with this acapella loop um, of this line that I created. And then it just loops round and round. And I add a little bit of a beatbox, but it's almost like a beatbox with, you know, that isn't a true groove yet. It's really just more of sounds. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the touch two has this incredible ability to make your voice almost sound like a synthesizer mm -hmm. when, you com when you combine a couple of different kinds of effects. Um, and that's something that I have discovered actually using it live and then recording with the touch two and then doing post-production afterwards. It's just this unbelievable, perfect storm of, uh, of effects. Oh, 
That's crazy good. And do you do you use it with uh, the voice that touched you? Do you use it with uh, your computer with a DAW, or mostly do you just record like a performance and then edit it in post? Yeah, I mean, it basically, what, when I was in the studio, I was recording it um, into Pro Tools, and then I would mess with it afterwards if it, you know, if I needed to add something. But most of the post production was done in terms of like keyboards and and that kind of stuff. But I really got so much out of just the pure effects on on the touch too, which was incredible. And speaking of just kind of making those sounds of your voice, you said you know you were able to make your voice sound almost like a synthesizer. Mm -hmm. A lot of songs on this album have that kind of depth and layered. Just I, I'm. Apologize, I'm not the most musically inclined, but um, all the, the scatting and vocal harmonies and everything that you're kind of pulling together and just creating this really deep layers mix, it, it's really impressive. And from what I can tell, it sounds like a lot of that is just made exclusively from your voice. Yes, yeah. I mean, that was that was kind of the idea. And that's, you know, it all kind of ties into the theme of Ona. So Ona is one woman, me, Ona is all women. And it comes, basically, the sound comes from the source. And, you know, and basically the, the effects from the TC Helicon have just, like, helped me achieve that philosophical idea musically, you know. Speaking of effects, um, so you mentioned you use a lot of, like, reverb and teardrop, but in the resistance, it sounds like mm -hmm. you're using more of, like, some megaphone effects. What, yep, what kind megaphone of effects. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of distortion. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted this idea, like, a call to action. You know, I wrote this song after I attended the Women's March in 2017, and so I had this image of me and Stacey Ann Chin, the, the poet who recites her poem, just literally standing in front of thousands and thousands of people with a megaphone and screaming into the crowd, just a call to action. And so the various distortions um, and like ring modulators and all of these things that the, that the touch to allows, it just kind of, we put it all together. We did a lot of layering of the same thing using different effects and then pulling those different tracks in and out. Uh, and so that that gave just this kind of three dimensional uh, aspect to some of those sections. And so, are you planning to take this album on tour? Absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> the tours were all canceled um, yeah. um, until I'm trying to reschedule. Um, I had an you know like a U.S. an East Coast U.S. tour in April, and I'm trying to reschedule that for September. There are a few things in Europe in July that still haven't been completely canceled, but they've been put on hold until we figure out the global situation. So, you know, the big questions for musicians, um, you know, the question is going to be, even when the virus stops spreading, how quickly will people become comfortable with gathering in large groups Bef you know, again, and it, it's, I think it's going to probably take a year. Yeah, um, there's, there's definitely going to be kind of a freeze period where people are a little hesitant to, to yeah. just jump back into everyday life. But hopefully with uh, proper quarantining, we can, we can yeah. nip that in the bud. And, yeah. You know, get, get back to concerts soon. <laughs> yes, hopefully. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a strange time because as musicians, I mean, you know, we do spend so much time in the shed writing music, producing music, but at the end of the day, we do it so that we can perform it live with other human beings. Mm -hmm. So the, the lack of that live performance aspect of what we do is so is a strange spot to be in. So I know that myself and all musicians that I know are itching to get back out on the road as soon as it's safe and to bring this music around the world and so with this uh this album you were talking about how kind of a lot of the stuff you did in the, the studio people were asking how are you going to do it live so yeah can you talk a little bit about um what plans or preparations you've made to kind of convert this album into a live performance absolutely i mean i have um every song that i perform live from the album i mean every song on the album i have um either like between one to three programmed uh, channels on the Live Touch 2. And basically 
throughout the song, depending on what section I'm in, I go back and forth between these preset channels. And I have different uh, harmony layers, you know, with, with these semitones, I have uh, different kinds of reverbs, different kinds of delays, different loop settings. I mean, basically, I have preset everything so that it makes it much easier and quicker to do live because a lot of times what happens with live looping is that you spend a lot of time setting things up mm -hmm. and then you just kind of lose, you lose a little bit of that in the moment uh, magic, no. let's say. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So I, I've spent countless hours aside from the recording, just figuring out how to do this live. And thankfully I did have a couple of tour, they were like trial run tours even before the record came out. I toured this uh, in Italy. Um, I toured it um, a couple times, not touring, but I, I did a few gigs in the States, just individual runs, just as trial runs to see how, um, how the music flowed together, what I could do effects wise. And, uh, and it's, it's really close to the record. I mean, I'm That's very awesome. proud of how, how it came out. And do you have to bring many people with you to perform songs like Ona or, or you know, with the ones with the choir or anything like that? No, or? so the, the choir, I actually loop all of that live. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, so I unfortunately can't afford to have, you know, the 13-piece band with all the singers and everything on the road with me. So that's basically what I've figured out how to do, how to recreate those sounds, those moments in the tracks, just doing it myself. Wow, that's awesome. I would love yeah. to hear the live version of this album. Oh, I hope you get to as well. I have to bring it to Canada. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let us know when you're, when you're all the way yes. on the, the West Coast. Yes. Um, so... Uh, let's see. I had another question I wanted to ask. Let me just see these songs here. You, did you want to talk a little bit about um, your partner? He did a lot of the drums on this album. Is that right? Yeah, he did. He did all the all drums. The drums he, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's an incredible uh, musician, composer in his own right. Um, Five-time Grammy Award winner, Golden Globe nominee. Um, he wrote the drum score for the Oscar-winning film Birdman. I don't know if you saw that. Really? I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, oh, Antonio yeah. Sanchez. He's an incredible musician. And, and that's a very New York film as well. That's, that's kind it of is a very New York film, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but he, um, you know, he and I have been together for now going on 11 years. And so obviously our work together and as individuals has just kind of gone on this really wonderful path together. We trust each other's ears. Uh, so much and we have this kind of co-producer relationship where we we workshop the tunes and figure out how to make them the best that they can sound and um so he not only played drums on the whole thing but he co-produced the whole thing with me did a lot of the post-production with me and um and you know he just has these golden ears and he hears things and um you know we 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 play off each other very very well just from our compatibility as a couple but also as musicians we really we really respect what the other one hears and so i think it it yielded an incredible product oh that's that's awesome to hear and i you basically answered my other question which was what's it like you know working with your your husband on tour and, and in the studio and that just sounds like you guys yeah. have a really i mean we we it is it's it's a great it's a great relationship working and personal relationship uh, I also sing full time in his group, which is called Antonio Sanchez and Migration. Okay. And it was actually in his group, you know, because we've been um, touring his records and his group for the last three or four years, you know, while my album was in production. So actually, a lot of the things that I discovered on the Touch 2 came from doing things live with his band and then applying them to my music. So, so feel... in his band, no, I really am more of a, more of a an experimental instrument. You know, we do much more, you know, kind of crossover modern jazz where I'm singing a lot of wordless melodies. Um, there's a saxophonist who also plays the iwi electronic wind instrument, hmm. and so he and I do a lot of 
doubling counterpoints, but also these crazy electronic sections where the band doesn't know whether it came from the iwi or whether it came from me and the and the touch too. So it's it's really incredible how the you know the use of the effects has made my sound in that band also. Oh, it's exciting to hear because the voice is such a versatile instrument. That's what we always say, and and hearing you use it as you know a voice and an instrument together, sometimes at the same time, yeah, <laughs> is, is really impressive. Um, what Let's see, what's the next question I wanted to ask you on this album? Because there's just so many things to talk about about it. Um, I'm so glad. <laughs> so you, this album is a lot about um, empowerment of women. Uh, yeah. And you, you talk a lot about like some modern things, like the resistance is tied to, to a, a, you know, the Women's March and protest. And Cassandra seems to be a tied a little bit to the Me Too movement, would you yep, say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Was that inspired by any particular events uh, or any events in particular or uh, just kind of the movement in general? I mean, it was a little bit of both, you know, as a young female musician coming up in New York, it's, you know, you, you experience a lot of things, a lot of unfortunate things. Thankfully, nothing, uh, nothing has happened to me that has been life-changing in terms of uh, violence or aggression, but there have been countless episodes of inappropriate touching, inappropriate comments, um, not taking me seriously because I'm a woman, because I'm a singer, you know, and just trying to basically sexualize uh, my job as a vocalist. And so that has been difficult to overcome, which I think most young female musicians have to go through, not have to, they shouldn't have to, but they do. Mm -hmm. um, and when all of the things started to happen with Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement, uh, I started to think about just the idea of women being heard and listened to and believed. And, um, you know, Cassandra is a famous uh, figure in Greek mythology um, she was seduced by uh, the god Apollo, and in his seduction, he offered her the ability to see the future. And when she refused his sexual advances, he cursed her with the ability to see the future, but that nobody would ever believe her prophecies. And so when people call, you know, sometimes a climate change uh, you know, climate supporters are called Cassandras of the world or people mm -hmm. that see something that's happening in the future, but they're not believed. Or in the case of the Me Too movement, um, you know, people that have had horrific things happen to them and have either been silenced or not believed. And uh, it just just made me think about that. And that was that was what is it was really for all of the Cassandras of the world who have something to say and who may not be heard. Yeah, it's a lot deeper than I, I realized. And I can kind of see some ties to Pachamama in that one as well. Absolutely. Speaking, you talked a little bit about kind of, um, you know, people wanting to sexualize in, in New York and all that uh, kind of up and coming artists. You have a song in here that you kind of uh, claim your sexuality back. Uh, yeah. Animal Instinct. Absolutely. Uh, that's, a, that's a, an exciting song. Why, can you talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, again, the, the album itself as a whole, all of the tunes basically describe what it feels like from my perspective to be a woman. So it's my femininity unapologetically explained in each tune. And animal instinct is a part of being a woman. It's, it's a part of being any human being, but for some reason historically female sexuality has been um, become a commodity almost it's you know our sexuality it exists for the purpose of satisfying others as opposed to us having our own needs our own desires our own dreams our own feelings about all of that and I happen to be in a very happy marriage and a wonderful relationship that has let me be free in how I feel about my own sexuality. 
and uh, and this song explains that explains that without any filter and explains how proud I am that I feel like a sexual being comfortable in my own relationship. Well, that's awesome to hear. And yeah, it sounds like, again, it sounds like you have a great relationship with your husband. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, we'll see after the quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's getting cooped up with their partners. Um, I, and that's, I think that's one thing that I did really appreciate about this album is that, you know, so much of it is very personal and it seems like there's like a lot of messages and a lot of stories. Like almost, every song almost feels like a ballad. And I know like mm. rock ballad and all that has connotations with it. But with this one, I mean it in the, like every song is a story. Yeah. It has, has a little kind of story tied to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I really love set free and you taught me which is more about your relationships with uh two men in your lives your brother yeah. and your father um yeah set free is a very sad song but really yeah. powerful emotional yeah um yeah. yeah no i mean it's uh it's like i said it's it's about the the way that i feel like i am a woman in my life so i do happen to be a sister um i do happen to be a daughter and i have have relationships with those two men. Unfortunately, my, my brother passed away almost 10 years ago. And so Set Free um, is really from the perspective of a sister and a sibling setting free the intimacies of that kind of relationship that have to do with your entire family history. So there are certain things that you share with your sibling or siblings that nobody else can understand no matter how close of a friend you have or how close of a spouse or life partner you have um you know or even with your parents there are just certain things that you share with a sibling that uh, stay with a sibling and so a part of that had to be set free when i lost my brother and then similarly to the song you taught me um you know i have an amazing father who um really showed me what it means to be a man who respects women, respects their choices, may not always agree with you, but doesn't stand in your way in terms of not allowing you to achieve what you feel you need to achieve. And, um, and you know, my father and I have disagreed on many, many things and had you know ups and downs in our relationship just like any other relationship but the whole point is that I feel that I've been able to create a work like this because of the people in my life and that includes the women in my life but it also includes the men in my life that's a really big part of it absolutely I mean this album feels like it's comprised of a lot of components of you made yeah. up of all these different aspects and it really you can feel it all pulled together there Thank um, you. I just wanted to return to the voice that touched you for a moment. Yeah. You said that a lot of things for this album. Oh, we lost the music. Let's turn it back up. Um, <laughs> you said that some of the elements for this uh, album you learned while touring um, with your husband's band. What do you feel like you still have more things you could learn with the voice that touched you? Have you? Oh yeah. I mean. The Touch 2 is such an in-depth, complex instrument. I really feel like even though I've become very good at the things that I've become good at, I am only getting my toes wet <laughs> in, this, in this incredible effects pool. Um, you know, I, I have so much that I still want to learn how to do. And I'm sure so many things that I... Um, have yet to discover. I mean, for example, um, Serin Tip and I, we actually did a, a duo session last year where we got together with all of our individual effects and we did a, we did a little kind of improv exchange for a couple of hours. And she showed me some things, you know, like for example, um, connecting like some kind of MIDI controller and using the mic to, you know, have different harmonies and crazy things that you can do and I you know I haven't even started I haven't even like opened that can of worms yet so there are so many things um, that I also feel really um, grateful to be in this kind of relationship with other vocalists who are using the same um, uh, products because we're learning from each other and we're ha you know 
having this creative exchange about how we can use these products. And it's just, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, Serendip is actually, uh, I believe how I first heard about you was- I'm not Yes, sure it's thanks to her. Yeah. It's thanks to her. But uh, for people who aren't familiar, Serendip uh, is another vocalist and also electronic artist who uses the Perform BE. Um, and uh, both of those allow you to kind of modulate, loop, and, and modify your voice. Um, but uh, Voice Life Touch 2 is, I would say, probably a, a little bit more of a powerhouse uh, on that. I mean, it's just, it's such a, it, it, it's really, I mean, it can do everything. It can really do everything. Um, let's see. Were there any other things you wanted to talk about on this album uh, in terms of using the Voice Live Touch 2 or uh, any experiences tied to the album that you really wanted to share? I mean, I think the most exciting recent experience I've had, uh, which actually gave way to my newest project, which is a duo uh, with my husband, a vocal and effects duo with drums, um, is that this past this this past NAM show uh, in January 2020, um, we were invited to perform for Yamaha because my husband is a Yamaha artist, and uh, we were obviously traveling together. We had come from our uh, you know we had been performing and then we went on vacation for holiday, and then we went to LA for NAM, and I of course had all of my gear with me as I usually do because we were performing before the holidays. And he emailed Yamaha and said, look, you know, Tana is with me. And so can we just do a duo improvisation? And we had kind of been threatening to do a duo project for, <laughs> for a couple of years, just because, you know, we live under the same roof. We do so much stuff together and, and we are both getting more and more interested in electronics. He's also using a bunch of electronics with his drums and, you know, triggers and things like that. And so they wanted him to come and perform on this new kit that they were um, promoting for Yamaha. And they said, sure, you know, I mean, I don't know what Tana's going to do, but, you know, go ahead. And we had no plan for what we were going to do. I was terrified because I, I usually like to get on stage knowing at least how I'm going to start and finish a song. <laughs> if, if I only have that as a jazz musician, that, that's great. But Antonio was like, you know, we'll be fine. Let's just start, you know, let's start and see where it ends up and we'll land together because we always, we always do. And that's a lot of trust. That's nice. What, what ended up happening two days in a row were two completely different performances, electronically charged with, you know, all of the effects and um, not only did I use effects on my voice, but I used effects on his drums. So I would oh, wow. trigger different delays and, uh, and uh, distortion and things like that. And I would bring my mic to his drums while he was playing, you know, different parts of the cymbal, under the cymbal, on top. And uh, so it was really interesting. And then I would loop his stuff that I was basically picking up through my mic and then I would play with it after the fact with all of the effects and the sliding. And so it was just, it was a really, really cool experience. And, um, and the video that we shared online actually went viral in the first two days. I mean, it was shared like, you know, or viewed like more than 30,000 times in two days or something, Yeah, no, which, I... which for, for a jazz musician is going viral. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Jazz, jazz is definitely a little bit of a sub genre there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's its own genre in its own right. But I mean, population wise but i mean in terms of the the jazz world uh as an improvised vocalist like you really use the voice i've touched to so so well and i think i mean i don't know in your experience but it seems like the voice i've touched to does allow you to really improvise a little bit um oh yeah how your voice comes out sounds and, and shape it and mold it so, absolutely um, i mean it, it also allows me to like create blankets of sound to to just fill up the space it, it basically allows me to float on top of something you know that that's mm -hmm. obviously the 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 amazing thing about looping in general but just being able to do that kind of thing with added effects that's what's so cool about it and then obviously changing the sound of the voice with the different effects and then 
just seeing all of the different possibilities of how you can change then the loop, you can change the dry vocal on top, you can change, um, you know, what's going in, what's coming out. It's, it's really, the, 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 it's endless, the, the possibilities. Well, I think the possibilities for what you're going to create is endless as well, because we're very excited to see what else you create coming out with the Voice Live Touch 2. And at TC Helicon, we're really excited about this album. And Thank you. I think that what you're doing is really awesome and fantastic. And we, we really just love seeing artists who take our products and push them to the max and really Thank you. experiment and, and push them to the next level. And we think that you do that. So. Thank you so much. Well, if you want to see it in action for the uh, live from our living rooms uh, dot com music festival and fundraiser, Antonio and I are going to be doing a live stream video on April 7th at 7 p.m. So April 7th at 7 p.m. Okay. That's right. We're going to be streaming right from our home studio in the basement and I'll be using my effects and and uh, he's going to be maybe using some of his effects, but he'll definitely be playing drums. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did at NAMM, just a, an open-ended, crazy concert duo. Fantastic. And will you be performing that in your living room? We will be performing it. I mean, it's our living room. It's like our, it's our studio living room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Siren Tip and her boyfriend, who uh, is also an incredible drummer, they, they also yeah. have a duo performance coming up for the festival. Vocalists and drummers, they're just they're yeah. getting together these days. We're taking over the world, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so the festival uh, starts April 1st, is that right? April 1st, it starts tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, great. Well, and then, uh, let's see. And then in May, you've got the magazine dropping and the new Yeah, album. I mean, the, the digital edition is already out, so we're very yeah. happy about that. And, you know depending on what happens with the virus we're not sure when we'll get the physical copies but the digital edition is already available online okay. at downbeat.com great so people can yeah. read the article about uh, oh, yeah. your work with the voice live touch and your new album and absolutely catch the new album on spotify and itunes and all all the music venues or music streaming platforms, music downloading, yeah. buying platforms. Also, if you would like to support artists during this crazy COVID-19 pandemic, Please also the album more. is the album is available on Bandcamp for purchase. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Perfect. All the opportunities. All the opportunities. Uh, well, uh, I don't have any further questions, but uh, did you want to have any final words you'd like to share with, with the audience before you go? I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just very grateful to be able to do what I do, especially in a time like this, you know, this is a crazy, crazy time in the history of our world. And to be able to be an artist and express what, you know, it, you can be kind of like a filter for what's happening around you and how you're perceiving everything. And it comes out in the form of music and expression. And the fact that I have these incredible um, instruments to work with, in the way of looping and effects it's just uh it adds to the whole realm of possibilities and allows me to create even more than i could have ever thought possible so i'm really thankful to tc helicon and for you guys for supporting me and for you know seeing what i'm doing and and showing that support and i i really just appreciate you guys well you all of that comes from your incredible voice, which is its own instrument in its own right. So thank you. You need to be thinking anyone, you should thank yourself and, and your fantastic <laughs> abilities. We're just oh, we could we could thank each other. Awesome. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today, uh, Tana. And um, I just hope that everyone goes out there and listens to your record because it's it's just an amazing, powerful, uh, beautiful album. Thank you so much, Tad. I really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody at TC Helicon. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>